Hi, my name is Mandy Jane Nelson. Welcome to my life page. Today we are going to talk about portrait photography. So let me give you a little background about myself. I finished high school, so I studied in Australia. I finished high school. From there I had a bit of time out from study just to get some life experience and then I went back and studied psychology at university. I didn't actually complete that psychology degree. I'm not sure whether I should share that with you or not. And I also did a degree in youth work as well. So, in fact, I've done four years of university study. But my parents were always concerned that I wouldn't make any money out of photography. They were encouraging me to follow more of a pathway that was around social work. I was always inspired by people, inspired by people and places and putting people in places. So my working history was very varied. I did all sorts of different jobs, ranging from... Basically, a lot of those jobs had people management or people skills, interpersonal skills involved with them. So that was the common thread through all of them. Uh, I'm also very interested in sharing beauty and enabling people to live their dreams. So really capturing moments. In 2007, I was working... So for me, portrait photography is being able to capture the innate beauty of your subject. So it doesn't matter whether that subject is really old or really fat or really whatever. It's about being able to recognize and see and capture the beauty of each and every subject, all of the clients that you get to work with. Yeah, for, for me, portrait photography is really working with light and angles. Sometimes you work with shadows. I love to work with color and black and white. So it's really about capturing the essence of someone, really making a connection from your heart space. Broad-based technical background. Um, what I mean is you need to do a little bit of research. You need to read some books about how to utilize the equipment, um, where, about computing. Uh, most of the time these days we're working with digital imagery, so it's really important to stay on top of uh, the new technology that's coming out all the time. This is imperative. So you can also do a lot of have would be to be observing others, observing others' work. If you can have a look at different magazines, again, you can perhaps, there's so many online publications, if you can get online, looking at Instagram, have a look at famous photographers, see what sort of work they're doing. Be very observant. Be observant to the world around you uh, and of yourself as well. To have the opportunity to capture beauty. For me, I see the beauty in people. I love people. Some people love to do landscape photography, but for me, it's capturing that inner beauty, and I've mentioned this previously as well. It's like being able to show the light that shines through each of us, and, and we're working with light with our camera as well. So for me, that's so blissful. On top of that, you get to meet all sorts of different people from all over the planet. If you are successful in what you are doing, you can travel the world with what you're doing. And so therefore, in Australia, we are able to hire equipment. I'm not sure if you can do that in other places over the planet, but if you have a good credit rating in Australia, you can pretty much hire the equipment, which makes it a lot easier because the equipment uh, is very expensive. And I'm sure you're aware of that if you have even a tiny bit of interest in photography. But I will say that it is well worth outlaying the money or finding the money or getting a sponsor or hiring the equipment to get the best quality equipment that is on the market because it makes a massive difference to the quality of work that you produce and it also uh, means less editing because the images that you capture are perfect to begin with. Internet access is also a if I'm doing a sunset shoot, and on most days it is a sunset shoot that I'm doing. So throughout the day I might just check things like, is my battery fully charged? Do I have a clean memory card? Think about where I'm shooting, what I'm shooting, 
what tripods do I need, what lenses do I need to pack, are there any special requests or requirements that the client has asked for, how much of a deposit did they pay, have I asked them to bring a USB, I might like to touch base with them on the day, just a nice little note to say or text message to say, hey, how are you going, really excited about the shoot this evening, look forward to seeing you, just confirming the details with them making sure that they're still coming, everything is still on track. Yeah, we'll do the shoot. Usually I'm working on an hour to two hours with people, so I will try to arrive about 10 to 15 minutes at the location before them. And I will make sure that I remember everyone's names. That's really important, particularly if you're doing a wedding shoot or a family shoot. It's really important that you've got everyone's names and and that I've committed those to memory. And then from there, uh, I will usually go home after, straight after the shoot and I'll offload the images from the memory card and I will just randomly pick out 10 to 15 of those and I'll send them through to their mobile or by email just as a sneak peek. So that evening, that night, three to four hours after we've met, they're getting a copy of those images straight away as a sneak peek. From there, the next, uh, depending upon what time I finish, I will continue going through all of those images, just weeding out any that I'm not particularly happy with to share. And then I will transfer them to USB and I will go to bed. And that's the end of my day. I hope I've been able to give you a balanced view of portrait photography. Thank you.